Let's take a look at all the manga that I got throughout February. Stay tuned. Welcome to the February 2023 manga haul. And as well, just like last time, I'm gonna be talking about anime and figures that I picked up throughout February. So we've got a lot of stuff to go through. Let's go ahead and jump on in. But as always, I'm gonna start with the new releases and then after done with the new releases, I'll go into all the older stuff that I picked up. All right, so on the first stack, I've got just a bunch of publishers outside of Viz and Kadansha, but we're starting off with the two uh, anime releases that I picked up in February. We've got the complete set for Sailor Moon R. This is the second season of the Sailor Moon franchise. I'm hoping, I haven't seen anything about the third one getting released yet in one of these complete set uh, Blu-ray sets, but um, I'm hoping that they continue to do that because these are a lot cheaper than doing the like, the two, I think each season is split into two. It's cheaper than getting the two. So anyway, and then from uh, Discotech, Fist of the North Star, and this has uh, the greatest subtitle, uh, The Legend of the True Savior, Legend of Rao, Chapter of Death in Love. So those are the two anime releases that I picked up for this month. Now, getting into the manga, we start out with one from Titan Manga. This is uh, Adam the Beginning, Volume 3. This has been really fun and action-packed. Uh, then we get Tokyo Aliens, Volume 2. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to continue on with this one. We'll make a final judgment call with uh, Volume 3. This is from Square Enix, by the way. And then The Girl That I Like Forgot Her Glasses, Volume, is this 2 or 3? 2. Uh, this one just got an anime uh, trailer released and it looks pretty good except for the fact that for some reason her hair looks like a symbiote, like it's moving in ways it shouldn't. And I don't understand why they put that much of a freaking uh, budget into a cheesy like high school, middle school rom-com. And I enjoy the manga, don't get me wrong. I just, that's a huge budget to put into something like that. Anyway, uh, Ramen uh, Wolf and Curry Tiger uh, Volume 2. This one's a lot of fun if you like gourmet series. Um, then we have another one whose anime is coming out soon, The 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You. Uh, this one's a lot of fun if you haven't started it yet and you're into rom-coms. It kind of has a fun twist on the, the harem genre of shonen romantic comedies. Uh, then we have Ayakashi Triangle Volume, is this two again? Yeah, Volume 2. Uh, this one, I have expressed in the past that I'm not the hugest fan of this series. I do really like Kentaro Yubuki's artwork though, not for those reasons, but I, I enjoy his artwork. I was introduced to him first with Black Cat, which is like his least um, fan service series of all. But um, this one, I, I'm kind of just getting out of habit because of the fact that it is a uh, weekly Shonen Jump title, or at least it was for the first, like, what, year, two years, something like that. Anyway, moving on, Kimono Jihen, uh, this last few have been from Seven Seas. Uh, this one's fantastic. Uh, if you enjoy, uh, you know, things with like yokai spirit type characters, and you haven't checked out Kimono Jihen, I definitely recommend it. Uh, then volume three of Candy and Cigarettes. Uh, I've been really enjoying this one as well. Uh, this one just, to me, gets better and better with every volume. If you haven't checked it out yet, I recommend that one. And then Correspondence from the End of the Universe is a pretty interesting little sci-fi series. Uh, check out volume one, it's a little different from most things on the shelves. Uh, continuing along the seven seas, uh, we've got The Invisible Man and his soon-to-be wife. This one's pretty cute, The the Invisible man uh, tries to court a deaf woman that works in their detective agency. Um, so it is kind of like a supernatural, but it's very grounded. Like the supernatural elements are just kind of relegated to who the characters involved are, but it doesn't really go further than that. Um, a Chinese fantasy volume two. Uh, I thought that the first book was it. I thought it was a single volume release and then volume two came out and I was like, oh, okay. Cause they're like, uh, it's kind of like anthology where every volume is its own story and they don't really connect or anything, but beautifully illustrated, uh, pretty fun uh, book to get. Then we have a classic of the shoujo uh, demographic, Marmalade Boy, re-released by Seven Seas. And this is a great release. If you've never uh, 
had Marmalade Boy in your collection before, this is a really great way to have it. Uh, these are, I believe they're two in one volumes, more or less. Uh, but the best part about these, aside from the fact that for me, I love oversized manga, but they have plenty of color pages throughout. They retain all of the original colored pages of uh, the manga. And so every chapter starts with a few colored pages. I really enjoyed reading this for the first time. Uh, it is kind of just messy, classic shoujo, but it was fun. And then for one of my current favorites, Tokyo Revengers, uh, I've been eating this series up and I am, uh, like this is one of the first series in a while that has tempted me to just go ahead and read the entire thing online. Um, but right now I'm trying to catch up with some stuff I have physically, so I'm gonna have to be okay with the uh, physical releases for now. Uh, then we have the third volume of Spriggan from Seven Seas, and I've really been loving this one. I, I read the first two uh, in preparation for the third one coming out, because I'd kind of delayed on reading those, and now the fourth and final one is coming out uh, pretty soon, and I can't wait to finish it. This one's a lot of fun, just classic, uh, shonen manga action. You can check out the anime on Netflix if you've never seen it before, um, or if you've never experienced anything to do with Spriggan before. Just check it out, see what it's about, and then maybe if you like the, the anime, you can check out the manga. And these are really well built, by the way. I've said this in previous videos, but like, these volumes are really well put together to the point that like, you don't have to worry about opening them and, and the spine creasing or anything like that. Unless you're like purposefully breaking the spine, I don't know, <laughs> that's on you. Uh, the beginning after the end, volume two, this is the Webtoon uh, Tapas series. Uh, this one's pretty fun about the, you know, the, uh, the king who's reincarnated as a child. Uh, so of course, two volumes in with the physical release is like barely scratching the surface of that series. Uh, then we have from Denpa, Rakuda Laughs. This is a really short one. Uh, it's not long at all, you can see right there, but it's a fun uh, series from Katsuya Tarada. Um, I think I read it in like 30 minutes or something, but it's a nice little like Yakuza, keep in mind it's very mature, like there's tons of nudity, even on the back cover there's nudity. Um, so this is definitely 18 plus, just want to point that out. Speaking of 18 plus, then we get Nana and Karu Volume 2, uh, this one's from Faku. Um, this one, even though it's from Faku, it's like the only Faku book that you can find at Barnes & Noble and it's not even wrapped, uh, despite the fact that there is. Uh, nudity within there. This is the second omnibus edition, the three and one, collecting uh, volumes four, five, and six out of 18. So there's going to be a total of six of these for the original series. There is a sequel series. Uh, I think there's a couple of sequel series actually, but they have not been announced to be getting an English release. So um, I know a lot of people are fans of this one from before this even got announced to be getting an English release. So those of you who are fans of Nana and Karu uh, or Nana Tokaru, uh, definitely pick up this one, support the series so that it can get further releases. And then one from Dark Horse this time is Blade of the Immortal Hardcover Deluxe Edition Volume 8. Uh, so we are two volumes away now from finishing this uh, the hardcover run. I'm very excited about that. So that's uh, it for all the other publishers. Now let's go ahead and jump into my Viz releases. All right, let's jump into all the new releases from Viz that I picked up. Uh, first up, we have the newest volume 38 of Yona of the Dawn, uh, and then we have volume 41 of Hayate the Combat Butler. Uh, this one, I think they only do like, what, two volumes a year? I've complained about that in the past. It's been done for a while with 52 volumes, I believe, in Japan, um, but because they're doing two volumes a year, it's gonna take another like five, six years for us to complete it here. Uh, Comey Can't Communicate, volume 23. This was the big one. Uh, if you've been enjoying this series, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Red Hood, the Hunter's Guild Red Hood Volume 2. So this is the middle volume of this three volume series, which was uh, unfortunately canceled in English. Uh, this one was a lot of fun. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I do really like the artwork in this one. So at the very least, there's that. Uh, and then a big one, Sakamoto Days Volume 6, fantastic series. Uh, then we get Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible Volume 6. This one recently wrapped up in Japan, and I think that this is like the halfway point. It's either going to be 
12 or 13 volumes total in Japan. Um, Black Clover Volume 32, I will admit I was like four volumes behind on reading Black Clover and I caught up in time to read 32. And I'm glad I did because there was a lot of action-packed stuff going on in those volumes that I hadn't read. Uh, and then we have, uh, we got Mission Yasukura Family Volume 3. This one's a lot of fun. I recommend trying it out if you haven't. Uh, Twin Star Exorcist Volume what, 29? No, 27. I'm getting ahead of myself. 27 for Twin Star Exorcist. Then, uh, not a manga, but we got the Demon Slayer One-Winged Butterfly. Not to be confused with Sephiroth the One-Winged Angel, uh, but this is one of the uh, novel collections. It has six tales of love, friendship, and courage. Uh, short stories, not, not manga stories. Just, just to clarify. Just to clarify. And then Ghost Reaper Girl Volume 4, of course, from the same creator as Rosario Vampire. So if you haven't tried it out, but you're a fan of Rosario Vampire, maybe give it a try. Uh, Blue Box was this Volume 3. Yeah, so three volumes in on Blue Box. Uh, and then the last one from the Shonen Jump line, at least for the standard size books, uh, The Elusive Samurai Volume 5. This one's from the same creator as Assassination Classroom. So if you are a fan of that series, uh, you might want to give this one a try. It's beautifully illustrated. I know some people are not. I, I love the story. I think it's great. But uh, even more so than the story, I think the, the artwork makes it worth it alone. Uh, then the oversized stuff, one from the Viz Originals line. This is The Girl That Can't Keep a Girlfriend is a single volume story. Uh, at least for now, it seems like it's going to be a single volume thing. Uh, from Miyari uh, Hiranishi, it's her kind of like autobiographical uh, story about her own first relationship and first you know, time being dumped, basically. Uh, then Rooster Fighter, volume three, fantastic series. I cannot recommend this one enough. It is as ridiculous as it sounds, but it is just so much fun. Uh, then we get to another favorite of mine, uh, Way of the House Husband, volume nine. This one is another fantastic series. Fantastically hilarious. I love the juxtaposition position of having this intimidating uh, ex-Yakuza member going through all these just everyday situations. And the, the last story in here, the last chapter uh, in this volume in particular, is one of the funniest things that I've read. I think it's the last one. Uh, it might be the second to last or third to last chapter that's in here, but there's a bonus story at the back that connects to it. And together, those two are the funniest part of this series that I have read. It's been, I, I love it. I love it. Uh, more things that I love, Zom 100 Volume 9. Such a great series. I know that there's a uh, live action adaptation coming out. I don't remember. I think there's also an anime coming out. I don't remember off the top of my head. But if you haven't read this one, it is fantastic. And it is by the same author, Haro Aso, as uh, Alice in Borderland, though both of them are very, very different stylistically, so don't expect the same type of thing. Uh, one of my absolute, like all of these are just things that I love. Like it was a great month for new releases. Uh, Golden Conway volume 28, this one's getting near to its end. 31 is the final volume. We should be getting 31, I wanna say early next year. If you haven't started reading this, I cannot recommend it enough. This is absolutely one of my very favorite series. And once it ends, it's probably gonna go down as one of my top 10 and concluded manga of all time as well. Uh, so big, big recommendation from me on that one. Uh, Chojin X Volume 1, this is of course from the same creator as uh, Tokyo Ghoul. This was my first time reading this. I didn't read this digitally as the chapters were coming out, and I thought that it was fine. It was fun, the artwork was great, uh, but the story has not really, I, I feel like there's not a ton of story yet. It's mostly just like, characters going out and fighting and doing stuff, which is fine. Uh, it was fun. It just didn't leave a huge impression on me, but I will be continuing to read the series. Uh, the Mermaid Scales and the Town of Sand. This is a single volume, two-in-one uh, Jose manga release. This one was pretty good. Uh, nice little drama about a girl who moves to a new place. Um, and then the final volume of Urusei Yatsura, or Urusei Yatsura, uh, volume 17. This is the final two-in-one of the classic series from Rumiko Takahashi. If you've never read Urusei Yatsura, if you've been enjoying the new anime adaptation from David Production, I highly recommend picking up the manga. It is, it's fantastic. It's just classic Rumiko Takahashi um, romantic comedy type stuff. It's it's great. It's it's funny, it's sweet, it's great. I love it. And one more thing that I absolutely love, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, this is volume seven of Golden Wind. Yeah, volume seven. So we're two more volumes away from finishing Golden Wind. And of course we have Stone Ocean coming out in the fall 
uh, November. Is that still fall? Is November winter? I don't know. Whatever it is, it comes out in November and I'm very, very excited. And then after that, it's just like two more years before we get Steel Ball Run. Anyway, that's all the Viz Media stuff. And the winner, as far as the most uh, new volumes that I got for this month is gonna be Kadansha. So let's check out that stack now. Okay, so now we're looking at the new releases from Kadansha and I've got a decent pile here. First up, I've got Flying Witch Volume 11. I haven't yet read this series, uh, but I bought it a few months ago and it was on sale off of the recommendation of my really good friend, Gio from the channel, The Manga Geekdom. He used to be a weekend geekdom, but he recently changed his channel name. Uh, to match with his content a little bit more. Uh, then I've got Lovesick Ellie Volume 8, and we've got Orient Volume 13. This one, I, I like 13 volumes in, and I'm still like very much not sure about how I feel about this, but I love the artwork, so I've still been reading it. Um, usually I don't give things that long, like, I, I don't know, I wouldn't usually do that, but the artwork is a lot of fun, so I'm still doing it. Uh, Go Go Loser Ranger, or Ranger Reject, um, this one's from the same creator as the Quintessential Quintuplets, but it's not the same type of series at all. This one's a lot of fun, especially if you are a fan of like the Power Rangers or other Sentai properties. Uh, Seven Deadly Sins, The Four Nights of the Apocalypse, the follow-up series to the original Seven Deadly Sins, uh, Eden Zero, this is volume, what, 21? Yeah, we're getting moving right along with uh, Hiro Mashima's series there. Then we've got a new one from Shuzo Oshimi, uh, Sweet Poolside, and this is the last Oshimi release aside from regular volumes of Welcome Back Alice and uh, Blood on the Tracks that we're gonna be getting for the foreseeable future. I'm hoping that this summer, like at Anime Expo maybe, that Kodansha will announce uh, plans for more Oshimi works, or maybe Denpa, they tend, tend to be the two that release this stuff. Um, because there are a few things that we don't yet have available in English, and I would love to see those uh, be available. But in the meantime, since this is the last one for the foreseeable future, I do intend on making my first uh, creator profile video that I've done in months, over a year, I think at this point, um, on Shuzo Oshimi. So hopefully I can get that done this month. If not, then I'll try to get it for next month. Uh, then we've got Miss Miyazen Would Love to Get Closer to You, Volume 3. This one I found out is only four volumes. I've been really enjoying this little one. Uh, I think mostly because I have a thing for delinquent characters in manga and the main uh, male lead is a delinquent. So. That's fun. And then The Last Gender. This one's a pretty heavy series, but it's been a really interesting read. And it's only three volumes. This is volume two. So volume three is gonna be coming out in the next couple months or so, and that'll be the end of it. Uh, now for some oversized releases, we've got One Dance volume four. Uh, I'm hoping that this one gets animated at some point just so we can see the fluidity of the actual dances and have it set to music. I don't know if they'll be able to license the music that's mentioned in here. Uh, Shonen Note Boy Soprano Volume 2. Uh, this one's been s s pretty good so far. Um, I'm not loving it, but I'm enjoying it enough that I'm going to continue. And I think it's only like 8 volumes, 8 to 10 volumes, something like that. So it's not the longest series in the world. Uh, then we've got Heaven's Design Team Volume 8. This was another recommendation from my friend Gio that I haven't yet read, but hopefully in the next month or so I'll be able to get to that one. And then this one's a recommendation from my friend Steph uh, from Baker Girl Steph is her YouTube channel. She does uh, baking tutorials and stuff like that. And then on TikTok, she has both Baker Girl Steph and Steph.Lafayette. So uh, we do lives on TikTok all the time. You can catch us maybe two, three times a week together doing those. Uh, volume 13 of Something's Wrong With Us. Uh, so that was one that she recommended me over the holidays to pick up because it was on sale. Grand Blue Dreaming, Volume 18, as hilarious as ever. Uh, let's see what next. Shangri-La Frontier, Volume 4. Volume 3 definitely picked up on this series. The first two volumes I was kind of iffy about, but Volume 3 took it beyond, and I'm so glad that I continued because that has shot up in the rankings of like series that I'm enjoying. Another one that I'm really enjoying, Blue Lock Volume 5. Uh, we're of course super behind on the physical releases in English, but that's okay. Uh, it's been very enjoyable nonetheless. Uh, Break of Dawn, this is an all-in-one uh, edition of this series. I think it's a two-volume series in Japan. I don't know about this. I, I didn't really... It didn't really vibe with me that well, and I honestly, like, after finishing it, I can't tell you barely anything about it. 
but I read it and I don't know, the artwork is nice. I just, I don't know, the, the, the story didn't really do anything for me. Uh, then we've got Seven Deadly Sins Omnibus Volume 8. Is this the eighth out of, yeah, this is the eighth one. So we are officially past the, the halfway point for this series um, as far as the Omnibus editions go. So moving right along with that one. Um, and I really like these. I, I love the oversized omnibus editions from Kadansha, and I love that they kept the, the connecting picture on the spine. Speaking of connecting pictures on the spine, Parasite, the uh, color edition hardcovers that are going to be spelling out the name Parasite on the spine. Uh, so this is volume two, of course, and it has the letter A on there. And I really like the way that the colors turned out on this. I think that they look fantastic. Um, that cracking is normal it was just the i hadn't broken in the spine on this one yet um yeah these are fantastic looking colored pages i don't think that they look too like digital that's the problem a lot of times is that these colored manga just look digitized this one looks like they actually put some good work into it and the final new release from kadansha is this box set of Wotakoi, the entire six volume series uh, as it was released in the US, collected in this one box set. And uh, here's a look at the outside of the box set, the artwork that they use, the top of it, the bottom of you need to see that. And then it does come with an extra, as most of these uh, box sets do, it comes with an extra little gift, if you will. Um, some sticky notes hard to see on the, the camera there. I'll try it. There you go. So you can make it look like the characters are talking because it has the little word balloons. Um, and that's why this has this little like lip right there is because the sticky note pad uh, fits right into there. So that's everything as far as the new releases from Kadansha. Uh, now let's go ahead and get into the older releases that I picked up, um, which are almost all from this because there were a lot of reprints and some cool stuff that I found. So let's go ahead and get on into it. Now before we get into showing all the older manga that I picked up throughout February, I do have a quick announcement that I want to make. And that is that I've got a new regular sponsor for the channel in Walt's Comic Shop. Now you might recognize the name Walt's Comic Shop if you watch my friend Omar's channel, Near Mint Condition. Uh, he's been partnered with uh, Omar for quite a while, but if you're not familiar, Walt's is one of the premier shops in the EU. Uh, located in Berlin, Germany, Walt's Comic Shop has a wide selection of thousands of manga and his inventory is growing every day. So he's got plenty of choices and is the best place to shop for manga in the EU if you're looking for English language manga. Uh, Waltz offers fantastic packaging, great service. Uh, he promised to have emails answered with any questions and queries within 24 hours. Um, so if you're ordering from Waltz, if you're in the EU, you are gonna be in good hands. You can check out the reviews for the shop on, online and stuff. They are overwhelmingly positive. Um, a lot of great things that customers of Walt, uh, Walt's Comic Shop have to say about the store itself. This is a big partnership for me because while I'm not located in Europe, I do have viewers from all over the world and a lot of viewers who are in Europe who will ask questions about where can I buy manga. And I know that while I talk about most of my stuff coming from Right Stuff Anime, that that's not the best option for people outside of the US because shipping costs are usually very high and can be kind of restrictive. But now I have a partnership with a great seller in Europe uh, who can help with all of your manga needs and offers low shipping costs to all of you in Europe. On that note, if you make your first purchase of 40 euros or more, you can use code the Omnibus Collector at checkout so that you can get free shipping. So that makes it an even sweeter deal. And if you do that, you get to support my channel. So it's a win-win. Uh, anyway, I'm extremely excited about this. From this video forward, I'll probably have this as a pre-recorded ad, but I wanted to make the announcement in person in this video uh, instead of doing the pre-recorded role. So uh, thank you everyone for your support, uh, for leading me to this point to where I can have a regular sponsor like this. And thank you so much to Walt's Comic Shop for supporting my channel. Uh, I'm very excited to, uh, you know, to the future. 
Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the rest of the manga and the figures that I picked up in February. All right, so we got a few stacks to start off with. Uh, first up, these are the ones that are not from Viz, and I mentioned before that I would be getting these, and uh, I thought it would be in my January haul, but they were in February, and that's the first four volumes of the uh, Shinji Ikari Raising Project spinoff of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, so these are the first four omnibus editions. These are each three and ones from Dark Horse, so they are pretty fat, short volumes. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to read the Shinji Ikari Raising Project before, but with the final uh, omnibus edition finally coming out, I figured this was the perfect time to jump into uh, what is labeled as on the back of the volumes themselves, the most popular Evangelion spinoff ever. Now, the rest of the older stuff that I picked up was from Viz. The first stack I'm gonna go through are all going to be uh, Shoujo Beat reprints. Uh, finally fin off, finishing off some of these titles. So we have volumes 23 and 19 of Kamisama Kiss. I think that this finishes the series for me. I'll, I'll have to double check when I shelve everything, um, but I think that's it. Actually, no, there's one more volume. I, I think I still need volume 13. Then I've been waiting for this one for a while. Finally, Snow White with the Red Hair Volume 5. So I'm done with this series. And another one that I've been waiting on for a while, Yona of the Dawn Volume 7 complete with this series as well. So that knocks off two series from my list. The Yona of the Dawn one, I'm a little bit dissatisfied with the uh, this reprint because the spine wraps a little bit, but hey, I'm, I'm most happy to at least have finished the series. Then Nana Volume 10, I have one more volume that I need to complete this series. Spoiler alert, I already got it as part of my March haul. But here's Volume 10. Um, and then, Finally, I also finished off Skip Beat. Here's volume 11, the last one that I needed. So that finished off all of those series. And then the rest of this stack from Shoujo Beat are all volumes of Kimi ni Tadoke. I think I'm still missing one or two volumes, but I got most of the series that I needed from both reprints that were available on Right Stuff and volumes that my brother-in-law found for me at a half price books. Um, going down the stack, uh, here, it, just the way that they're arranged, and it's kind of out of order, but here's volume 21, uh, here's volume 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 6, Five, four, twenty-five, twenty-three, and twenty-two. So they're a little bit out of order, but uh, I believe there's like two more volumes, like I said, of Kimi ni Todoke, and then I'll be done with that series. And that actually wraps up like most of the shoujo beat titles that I was trying to track down. The only ones left are like a volume of Library Wars, and I, I think like some stuff that's like out of print, not getting reprinted, and will be very hard to find. Anyway, uh, one more stack to go through from uh, older Viz releases, uh, so let's go ahead and check those out. Okay, so this is something. Um, the rest of these are all Pokemon Adventures manga. Now, what has it been? Like a couple years since the 10th volume of the uh, Collector's Editions came out, and I wanted to wait. I don't know if I ever mentioned it on this channel or elsewhere, but I wanted to wait before collecting because I did want to collect more. I really enjoyed reading Pokemon Adventures manga. I only ever read the first generation before, but I, I continued with what was in those and really loved it. So I was like, yeah, eventually I would like to collect the rest of it, but I want to give a chance to see if they do like a second set of collector's editions or something. So I waited and I think it's been like two years. And finally, I decided to give in, especially because Right Stuff was doing a sale on like box sets and they had the Gen 4 box set available uh, for a pretty good price, so I went ahead and jumped in on that. So we've got the uh, Diamond Pearl Platinum set. This has the entire 11 volume run. The box itself is kind of not the greatest condition. It's, it's kind of coming apart, but that's okay. I don't really care. The, the box is super cheap anyway. And it came with a little poster, a tiny little poster that I'm not gonna be putting up anywhere because it's very small <laughs> and I don't really need to put it up anywhere. Um, but then I continued 
buying the rest of what's out from Pokemon Adventures. And so I'm trying to flip these over so I get them in chronological order as we go through them. Uh, so there are, I, I, I knew that this was a thing, but I had to kind of teach myself. So I made sure that I was getting the right ones, but there's like from, I think from heart gold, soul silver onwards, um, they did like the the smaller like five dollar volumes where they each had about a hundred pages And then they would re-release those in the normal volumes ten dollar volumes. So heart gold soul silver has two volumes um, This I found very funny uh, because of the way that they split up They split up the volumes in English is different because they then the Japanese release because they're splitting it up by series instead of just like normal um, here's the the second volume of Heart Gold and Soul Silver compared to the first volume of Black and White. It's the Black and White one is is tiny, but it still has the same ten dollar cover price. So, way to go, Viz! Thank you so much for <laughs> charging. Like I, I I don't even think is it like one it's two? No, it's four four chapters, but it's only like a hundred pages. So, uh, yeah. So I got Heart Gold, Soul Silver one and two, Black and White on one two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So all of black and white, and then with uh, black two, white two, they only had two of the four available. Yeah, I think it's just four. Uh, so I have those two right now, volumes two and four. And volume four is another one of these skinny boys because the first of the thick volumes of X and Y is super thick. Um, so same deal as what happened before. Still a $10 cover price. But yes, there are uh, four volumes total of this one. And I have volume three and that will be part of my march haul so spoilers for my march haul, haul there uh but i don't think i've gotten volume one yet i think that's the last one that i need is volume one i'll, I'll double check i might have already had it in another order though um so that would finish off that and then x and y are the ones that are currently being released uh because like i had said they release the smaller ones first the like the five dollar volumes and then they release the ten dollar volumes now whereas those really skinny ones like you know this one are uh ten dollars so are the really fat ones so the you know the price i guess kind of equals out if you're buying everything but um yeah, so X and Y, they released the $5 editions, the smaller ones, the pocket books or whatever before, and then they're re-releasing it in the thicker $10 editions. That's volume one, uh, volume two, volume three, and volume four is the most recent release. This will be, I believe, seven volumes total. Um, and I'm guessing that we'll see the next one announced um, in Viz Media's June announcements. If not, I don't know what rate these come out at. I don't, I don't know how quickly these volumes come out at. Uh, so if it's not June, it's probably gonna be the October announcements. They wind up announcing the next line, the next set of Pokemon. Anyway, so that's everything that I got in um, February as far as manga goes. But now I've got a few figures to show off. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. I'm gonna jump behind the camera to get into POV mode. Okay, so we've got, first up, three different Grandista figures. I really like the Grandista line. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned that on my channel before, but these are fantastic. I have a bunch of them from One Piece. So I added uh, Nami and Law to the One Piece set and they're both great. The Nami one is great. And the only thing I'm gonna note with her is that I'm hoping that we continue to get some Grandista releases for the other Straw Hats. Because uh, we have, of course, Luffy, and we have Zoro and Sanji. Uh, now we have Nami, so I'm, I'm hoping we get the other as well, so we can have the entire crew in the Grandista line. And then for Law, um, this one I bought used, so I knew going in that it was a little bit uh, imperfect. Number one, you can see he leans spectacularly, and I don't, I cannot decide if that's on purpose or not because I've had. I have seen other people who have this same law who have 
had the same lean as as he does as mine does but I've also had someone tell me that the law figure that they have does not lean so much, so that's not normal. I don't know. Whatever the case is, this is mine. It is what it is. The main thing about him that is not great as far as being uh, a used figure, a pre-owned figure, is that the stand doesn't fit entirely properly on his foot, so if I pick him up, it usually just falls off. Um, also, he, he doesn't really, like, his torso and legs don't click together that well, but it's okay. I have him on display. He's never fallen over. Nothing bad's ever happened to him. It's just something that I have to keep in mind when, when moving him around. Dio is great in every way. Like, this is a fantastic figure. Um, the only thing I'm hoping is that they will make, continue to make more of the Grandista line because I currently have... Uh, Giorno and I have Jolene and I know that there's also a, uh, a Stone Free and I know there's also Josuke and I haven't gotten those yet. The Josuke one is a little bit pricier than I want to get. There's also a Rohan and I might get the Rohan because I've seen him going for some pretty decent prices on like eBay and stuff but I'm also wishing that it was Rohan from like part four and not Rohan from one of the Thus Spoke Rohan Kishibe stories. Anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Dio. He's a fantastic figure. I'll actually pick this one up uh, and get closer to the camera with that one because I'm not in fear that he'll fall apart like I am with, uh, with Law. But you can just get an idea of kind of the detail that these figures have. They're really great. And for the price point, like how big they are for this price point, um, new usually find them like if they're not you know out of print out of stock or whatever uh you find them new for like 40 bucks so they're really great uh i, I feel like i'm saying great a lot but i, I really do like these um they they do have them for other series as well uh you can just look up like grandista nero grandista n-e-r-o is the line of these bigger ones more or less um I don't know. I'm kind of new to them. I just discovered them with the One Piece ones, and I really loved them. And so I've been buying them. Anyway, moving on to the next and final part of this video. Sorry, I lied. It's not the final part. Um, I completely forgot that I did get Guts in February. So this is the pop-up parade Guts figure. It's like bigger and more detailed and also twice the price of a regular pop-up parade figure. Um, but it is also very nice, very well detailed, and I highly recommend it if you want something to put on your shelf next to your volumes of Berserk. Uh, I think from the Crunchyroll store, it was like $70, $80 or something. Uh, I don't know if they still have it in stock, but if they do and you're a fan of Berserk and you just want something that's, you just want something that's really nice looking and not like stupid expensive, this is gonna be for you. Uh, and moving now onto the final piece of this video. I do not at this time feel like taking the boys out of the case, but here are the prize figures of the, uh, much of the cast of Tokyo Revengers that I got. Now, most of these I got in a single lot. I got seven of these eight figures um, in a single lot and it broke down to about $20 per figure. And then the final one I got, which was the Takamichi at the front here, uh, I got for about 25 to 30 after shipping. Uh, all of these I, I got on eBay. Um, I was debating for a little bit whether I wanted to get these prize figures or not because these are smaller than what I usually go for, but I wanted something Tokyo Avengers in my collection and when I found the lot that had like seven of them for about 20 bucks each, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and move on those because uh, they are pretty nicely detailed. Yes, they are small, but they are very nice looking. Um, I particularly like uh, the way that the, I mean, the main three look great, but this version of Mikey with the, the shirt off and the jacket open fantastic looking like the best most detailed one of all of them uh, there are other bigger tokyo avengers figures that are out slash coming out that i would probably like to get but in the meantime just to kind of fill that need that i was feeling that urge to have something tokyo avengers on the shelf this this worked beautifully 
So that well, that's is it. That's uh, the haul for February of 2023. Thank you so much for watching. I'm trying to do better uh, to actually read everything that I get before I make these videos. Um, so as you could tell, like when I was going through all of the new releases, I was able to talk about all of them. And the main goal of that is so that when I'm doing these videos, it's not just me talking about, oh, look what I bought, but also me being able to give recommendations and in some cases, like for Break of Dawn, uh, tell you that I was not a fan of that book too much and that I don't really recommend it. But otherwise, that, that's what I want to do in these videos is not have them just be me saying like, look what I bought, but being able to help y'all. So I hope that, that that comes across and I hope that that's uh, helpful, that the video is helpful to y'all in, in maybe giving you new things to try out, new things to pick up uh, and enjoy. Anyway. Thank you again for watching this. Thank you again for uh, to Walt's Comic Shop for the support in this video. Um, again, if, if you missed the ad in the middle, if you are a viewer of mine and you're located in Europe and you're looking for a great place to buy your English language manga, you can buy those over at Walt's Comic Shop. And on your first order of 40 euro or more, you can get free shipping. Anyway, thanks everyone for spending time with me. I will see you all on the next one. Peace out.